82nd episode of the UCW show. Check the title. Leftist Christians and Feminist Scientists. Ah! <laughs> it's hilarious. 
it is actually quite funny. But I, without further ado, let us get the show started. If you want to support the show, consider donating to Cash App slash Cash Sign Undead Chronic, or you can like this video or subscribe to Kite and Chaz. His link will be in the description, and uh, Kite, you can show your shit too. Let's join Hammerhand, shall we? What kind of person you are and what kind of person you're going to be is if you can't eat your fucking food with your mouth closed. That's a good indicator of what kind of person you're going to be. But before we get any further into this, let me welcome to the stream uh, the Green Bandmaster, Undead Chronic. Well, uh, Puniti. Puniti, sir. How you doing? Uh, every time, Hammerhand, it's kind of like this. Chronic is out in the simp swamps, you know. <laughs> I've catching, seen that lately. Catching catching frogs, you know, helping the Ribby, Ribby and the boys out, but looking for cuckolds and simpoids and feminists, swamp witches, these demons. And once I catch one, I cage them, and I'm on the back of the wind boat, and I, I drive it up river, and there's an old man that lives by the swamp, old Hammerhand. He's like, what you got today, boy? <laughs> I, got, I got a Christian feminist. I have a leftist scientist and her cuck husband. How much can I get for this meat? Yeah, she ain't no Christian. Let me tell you that right now. Uh, she's she's not a Christian, not by any stretch of the imagination. Look, man, I think that we are all pretty comfortable here, at least in this chat, with the idea that if you are going against the word of God, you are not a Christian if you are cherry picking the Bible and selectively enforcing or de-enforcing, de-emphasizing passages in the Bible, you are not a Christian, period. Plain and simple. I mean, Christians have their limitations. They have their tolerances. And all of that is set by God. She, she looked so, she looked so good when she was talking about me being a sinner. Mm -hmm. She looked such a good little Christian. Mm -hmm. And then, and then she started, you know, then she started saying, well, technically, uh, the verse from Timothy saying, I do not permit a woman to teach is just in church. As soon as I leave that doorway, that's not those true. rules don't apply to me. You can go to Ephesians and see that that is untrue. And Ephesians so, will tell you that. And so it's almost like she's been confronted with these views before. And instead of listening to the view and thinking about it, she just, how do I, how do I use an intellectual sidestep to get around it, get away from it? She um, does so the same thing that all of these other half-assed, half-baked Christian wannabes do, is that they concentrate on one or two passages from the Bible, and then they rework the entire Bible in their head to suit their debaucherous purpose. Yeah, and so, I mean, after that conversation, I kind of recognized, you know, this is Canadian feminist Christian, sure. It's like a morbidly obese world-class sprinter. Sure. <laughs> uh, Healthy at any size. And then I sent my boy, I sent my boy Kite and Chaz. I'm like, someone said that she was down for an open relationship, Chaz. Go ahead and find it. It took him, he said, it took him like two minutes. It took him two minutes to find clips of her and her weak, soylent husband, which, can you guess what his job is, Hammerhand? Uh, I believe I saw it, so I wouldn't be guessing in honest faith there, but I saw it. He he is supposed to be a fitness instructor. He fitness advice. He's a fucking fitness instructor. Ah. That's like somebody that eats four buckets of ice cream a day talking about, yes, I'm a fitness instructor. Yeah, he was uh he was like, You never dated a Christian girl, Chronic. I don't I know for a fact you haven't. And I'm like, Okay, you want to get pegged, you wanna be in an open relationship. You got the body of a premature born gazelle on the plains of Africa about to get yonked by a hyena. And you sell <laughs> fitness advice. And he doesn't even sell fitness advice off his own merit, right? His the, their family's whole shtick, like what brings the money to the table, is the fact his whore of a wife puts on chokers and goes on fresh and simp podcasts. Yeah. And so she gets but, all this money and attention by looking like a sex symbol, right? Or, yeah. You know, being a whatever, a non obese woman. And thinking she's smart to get leftist simp bucks, she get all these viewers. And her husband's like a parasite. He only gets business through her channel. And the dude's yeah. a fitness advisor? Bullshit. Bullshit. You can say anything that you want to say nowadays, right? It's, it's not a crime, at least on the books. It's not illegal to misrepresent everything about your life and who you are. That's, it's not a crime. It should be. But, you know, we have to... Obviously, you have to honor free speech, which puts it on the person hearing the free speech, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, to be informed, 
to be informed. Can you imagine being comfortable enough to come on that stream with you and Soylent Grin talking about all of that Christian shit and, and then you're still comfortable enough to leave up videos like the one that we're going to look at today? And the whole thing is just, it just is evidence for the verse in Timothy. This is why you do not permit women to teach because this is the no. shit they pull. And it's not from the church. It's not just from the church. It's not just from the pulpit. It's out here in the world. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The bottom of the well that women have when it comes to debauchery and the filthy shit that they will do has no bottom. There is no bottom to that well. Like a masculine Christian male figure or friend who roasts me for doing some bad behavior, I'll take that to heart. A right. woman, a, a feminist, lying, conniving whore that needs two inches of makeup on to look bangable and who flies and, you know, she hangs out with a bunch of whoremongers. What kind of woman do whoremongers hang out with? Huh? Horse. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, whores. And yeah. then she represents and whore, herself. Whore makers, right? And then she represents herself as I go to church all the time. I was married as a virgin. I know what I'm talking about. No. Bullshit. There's Bullshit. no fucking way she was married as a virgin. I have never met. A, she would be no the way. first virgin ever to hear my no hymen, no diamond stance and take offense to it. And, and you know, um, what do they call them? Uh, gosh, what's the word? When a Don't data know? point is extremely outside the normal. Oh, an outlier? An out, yes, an outlier. I forgot that. Outliers can teach you a lot about different things. Um, this one is just teaching me that <laughs> she's teaching me a lesson that I learn every single fucking day. You know the lesson is, Hammerhand? Tell me. Bitches fucking lie. Bitches yeah. fucking lie. <laughs> no, it's not, no, I got no I got way, I gotta sell a book. Man. Bro, I gotta sell a book. I gotta sell a course. No way. Under Chronic with his Bitches 101, his first in the series of Bitchology, <laughs> number one book, 800 pages, Bitches Lie. 800 pages, every every text is Bitches Lie, Bitches Lie, Bitches Lie. Yep, uh, I'll be covering on the Sunday sermon how all of these assholes out here that consider themselves middle of the road or somewhat conservative have been opening the doors to all of these very, very non-conservatives, the latest one being this Eliza Blue uh, crotch rocket bitch that's running around striking down channels on Twitter. And she actually knows Elon Musk. So uh, anybody that thinks that Musk is 100% is out of their fucking mind. Because if you're fucking Amber Heard behind Johnny Depp's back while she's married... <laughs> Uh, you, you know, and you're you're willing to overlook that. You've got some character problems too. I mean, just look at the look at her husband. Like this is this video. I'm a fitness advisor. I'm wearing an extra small pink sweatshirt. I'm not filling it up. Looks like there's a lot of room in there. He's he could carry snacks in for a whole middle school field trip to the movie theaters in that shirt. Right? <laughs> He's a fitness advisor. And what are they doing? They're eating ice cream at two in the morning. And look at the gra <laughs> this. Okay. <laughs> I laughed at the fact that this woman was trying to like I forgot what I said. It was just like, oh, oh, some some woman who studied soft science is gonna debate me about stats. Oh, big whoop. And she's just like, You're just being an asshole because I'm owning you on logical fallacies. And then you know what Alex said at that point? I'm not sure you saw it. No. Alex was like, To be fair, to be fair, this is the calmest chronic has ever been. I'm like, Oh, you think I'm being mean now? Like you you think this you think I'm actually trying to roast you now? I've yeah, seen but Cabbage he wasn't, Patch he wasn't Kids. Being fair. I've seen Cabbage Patch Kids with more sex appeal than this Goblina. Okay. <laughs> These people, I mean, look at them, right? Look at her. You see, do you see the image on screen? Yep. Look at her and then look at him. You take the beard off of him, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> Bro, you gotta tell me what your nose workout is, because you got a schnoz. Yeah, he's got a biggie. Yeah, people uh, like that yeah. don't get in fights because when their nose gets broken, it gets broken like in 18 places. Yeah, not not a good not a good view. Yeah, you can't. This tell is the, the kind. This is the kind there. of man like presumptuous, uh, narcissistic, feminist witches marry a man they can easily control. I guarantee you, her her word is law in their house. Oh, I are, you already know that. You can tell by the way that she directs him in this video. This is nine months ago or so, but you can tell by the way that she directs and cues him for responses that she's she wears the pants in the family. How are you gonna and wear a she, tight? How are you gonna wear a tight shirt and I can't even see your pecs? And then self fitness well, advice. You know, I mean, to his credit, there's supposed to be a rib cage there. So, 
you know, looks like one <laughs> of those. Me... Looks like a field peasant. You guys, you ever seen like the field peasants they sell at the store? Oh yeah, it's like oh, a, yeah. almost like a miniature turkey. It's like the size of your fist. Oh yeah, this I've dude's seen them. chest. It's pathetic. <laughs> Pretty I mean, crazy shit, is, man. Fitness I guess instructor. This is more American, like. And I make fun of Canadians, some Canadians in my comments. They're like, oh, no, Canadians are like that. I'm like, yeah, I know. But I make fun of everybody. I make fun of Americans for being American. Oh, uh, yes. Um, but maybe this is my toxic American masculinity where fitness culture is about you know, actually having big muscles. Fitness. Uh, nah, this is some, he's, on, he's on some bitch shit. Let me get in the chat here real quick, man. Tiger and G, man, what a 50-piece, bro. Coming at you with another 11 11 pieces. It's 50 poly, but uh, 11 pieces here. And that's all right, man. Hope you don't mind. Sup, boy. Of course. Yeah, I mind. I mind shekels. Are you kidding? Come on. No, don't mind at all, man. Let me get down here. Mike. What's going on, Mike? With a 20 piece, bro. For the uh, Mad Monk, you and Chronic are the realest Christians I've ever seen. Well, a Christian always understands that their work is never done. Their work is never done. And it doesn't mean that you got to go out there and throw shit in people's faces. You don't have to bust them. You don't have to knock them down. But you don't back up when they bring uh, falsehoods, lies, misrepresentations to your doorstep, drop them at your feet, and expect you to deal with it. No, you don't. Uh, here's, you here's rebut some, them. You kick their asses. Here's some things Christians don't do. Christians aren't scared of dying alone, right? No. No, no. Matt Walsh. Yeah. Um, Christians, uh, it's kind of crazy that... This even has to be a stance. And this is why I don't go to churches because churches are typically filled to the brim with people like on the screen. Christians aren't into sodomy. That's not what Christians are into. And if you're exactly. into sodomy and you're a Christian, guess what? You're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. So if sodomy. You're, if you're entertaining the idea of getting dicked in the ass with a fake dildo by your wife or girlfriend, you're not a Christian. If you're presenting the idea to your husband, you're not a Christian. If you engage in debaucherous behavior, you're not a Christian. You have an unclean soul. Plain and simple. It's just that simple. You I can mean, ask like, look, forgiveness like, look, every single fucking day, but what difference does it make when you go back and you recommit the sin? I forgot um I forgot the sim's name, but look, bro, it's okay that your your quote unquote Christian wife, unquote, has a JJ deeper than the Marianas trench and you can't feel it when you're banging her. You, but but you, you, there's other ways to achieve an orgasm. We besides, talk about yeah. people that go out there and they get these degrees in these pseudosciences and they think that they're legitimate. They're not legitimate at all. There's nothing legit about this field because, number one, the field is not self-sustaining. It works off government funding, off government backing. You remove the government backing, the field collapses. So what I did was... Did I explain the science pyramid to you, Hammerhead? Uh, it, it, I think it was a while ago. Yeah. I'll, I'll explain yeah, it. I'll recap I, it for you. It's not fresh in my viewers. head, though. So. The most basic and the truest science that if you understand the language, like anybody can prove and you can prove your truths without any kind of questions is math, right? The floor right. is math. I can write an equation, and if you know what variables I'm using or you understand the kind of um, – symbols I'm using, you can look at an equation. If you know the math, work it out yourself and agree or disagree with the equation. Right? Right. From there, it goes to physics. Physics, physics research, physics, a ton of it is based on math. Now, some of the right. theoretical physics of like, you know, let me look in a telescope and make up shit, whatever. It, but you can't really prove or disprove that because we don't have a way to get data from light years away. From right. Physics goes chemistry. Now, chemistry is based on physics. Right. So like you do a chemistry experiment and you say, I think that this chemical does this under these like parameters, like in this acidic environment or this temperature. And it's proven through physics. Temperature is explained by physics. You know, the molecules move faster. They have higher inherent kinetic energy. OK, from chemistry, then you go to biology. Now, when you go to biology, every time you go up, it gets more complex and it's harder to prove your findings. A math proof is it. You, you literally write your proof and you can people disagree with it. Proving a chemistry thing is basically someone else creates the conditions and measures the the chem, the chemicals or whatever whatever you're making and looks at the yield and it's done. Right? Biology is a little bit different, but it's it's a little bit harder. There's things that you know, like maybe there's a gene you're not accounting for. Uh, maybe there's uh, chemicals you're not accounting for. Maybe there's a physics uh, issue you're not accounting for. But people can still pretty much prove it. But there's still it's still a little bit softer than the other ones. From biology, biology is not fields. 
but the, the, the top of the biology, the hardest feeling biology probably is probably um, neurology because it gets so crazy. Just one human's brain is so complex. Most leading neurologists or um, neuroscientists, I think those are the PhDs. I think neurologists are, yeah. are physicians. Um, they'll, they'll tell you straight up, oh, we know like 5% of what we need to know, right? Okay. Now, that's for me, that's the end of the soft science. Oh, that's the end of the hard sciences. When you go up to psychology, sociology, <laughs> okay, psychology, you, even individuals, so many factors you'll never know. But then you look at groups of people. Yeah, good luck. Good luck proving anything. So well, the people in the soft sciences, they operate under a completely different set of standards and people in the hard sciences. The people in the soft sciences, like AU Dite, which she has her master's degree, but I don't think she's published anything. And she obviously isn't working in that. She's making money off of saying fallacies, right? Her set of fallacies are based on soft science. And so what well, I did was after that debate, I called my best friend who is an embryologist. He has is, he is PhD in embryology. So shout out to the artificial womb breeders. And I played like five minutes of her saying, you can't, she's like, there's an ecological fallacy. You can't look at a epidemiological study and say that an individual is affected by it because there's all these other factors. And I'm she like, kept calling makes, it an epi epiphenomena, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense if you're in the soft sciences. Like you can't do it because you are trying to prove a soft science point. But when I look at the factor of partner count, and that's the only variable I have, I can. She's like, but there's other variables. But there's other variables. You can't, you can't take the population and say the individual lies. And I'm like, no. no yes, you can't. I'm not, What's I'm, another good word for soft science? Quackery. I mean, there's, there, are, there are some merits and usefulness for some of the thing is The thing with soft science is it, when it gets hard to prove things, a lot of people will come in and just talk bullshit, right? So let's talk about sociology. Sociology is an interesting field. Um, it definitely has some uses in it, old school sociology, but it's so easy to just speak bullshit and get a million dollar grant for a research project that there's not any real sociology going on anymore. Yeah, well, it's just uh, just an excuse to go and spend money. So basically you know, my, my argument to her was like, look, if I can't look at marriage rates or divorce rates related to partner count because there's a fallacy, thank God you're not in charge of a hospital. Because if a little black kid goes to the hospital and his finger's swollen and it's red and he's screaming, let's say it's a three-year-old kid, can't really talk, can't talk to both sides, he's just screaming, his finger's swollen. Well, off the epide epidemiological studies that we do on people in the United States, we know black people have a much more likely chance of having sickle cell. Well, um, doctor, not doctor, not so erudite would say, well, I don't want to perform an ecological fallacy and look at this population, this statistic, and put it on the individual. So most likely this kid isn't having a sickle cell problem. He probably just smashed his hand in a door like most white kids when they have this problem. Yeah. Boom. Get the ball suit off you. Yep. Yep. Like, Brother, it, it happens, you know, when, it, when it comes to these soft science bullshit fields, they can talk like this and never make conclusions because they they're not paid to make conclusions. They're paid to conjecture. But you go to a fucking hospital, you go to a fucking lab, yeah, we, we look at the data and we make decisions off of it. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, uh, obviously, I agree with you because I think we both kind of understand what rationale and logic and common sense are. When you uh, go and get a trash degree in gender studies or certain forms of sociology, you, you and I understand the social what study. It's what? She studies psychometrics, which is the study of how to study psych stuff. They, psychometrics it's so is hard just to, data, an, it's it's just so data hard, analytics. No, it's so hard to get data and agree about data in the soft science fields. People just study yeah. methods of collecting data. Hey, guess what? Ain't nobody going to fucking study how to get data in a chemistry lab. The, yeah, chemis it, the chemistry doctors analytics. know what's up. You can get a fucking... I didn't know that you could get a master's degree to be a studier of a study. That's That's strange. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, let's get with Devin Alistair here real quick, man. With a 10-piece, bro. Don't let the beard and mustache fool you. They say he's strong. They say what? They say is strong in that one. The, the, soy. the soy? Oh, the soy is strong in that one. Yeah, yeah. I just got to well, look no. into his eyes. You look into his eyes. I, I literally, When you looked into the camera, I looked into his eyes, and I didn't want to say it because I wasn't trying to make the panel turn to a roast-a-thon. Well, um, see the eyes of a deer. See the eyes of a prey good. item. He's got them soft doe eyes, man. 
He does. He got some really soft doe eyes, man. Thank you for that 10 piece, Devin. Uh, Mike with a 10 piece, bro. Not afraid of death for Christ promises my treasure are in heaven and that the Father's house is one of many mansions. I don't go there for treasures, I don't go there for mansions. I go there because it's home, because yeah, we're I, going I, home. I got an AU Dite simp in my comments, and he says, under chronic, but she presented studies though. No, when I asked her to present a study, do you know what she said to me? No, she said, Google it. Well, I mean, that's that's a pretty big dust yeah, off. What a, what a great scientist she is. She doesn't have yeah. a study that's proving me off the bat of her head. That's a pretty good dust off. The only study that uh, this woman cares about is the one where she is right all the time. Yeah, no, Period. she can't Plain be wrong about anything. She's not, she's, she won't concede a single point. And I saw she, when you were cornering her on that stream that she exploded and she went and got old boy here to try to clean it up for her. Like, she's the man of the house. She should just stay on the cam. But um, every time she would, what she would do is she would put, she would, her and the panel would have these crazy situations, right? Yeah. And she'd be like, okay, but if you're only looking for hymens, it means you're, you're, you're artificially limiting your, your available number of partners. I'm like, yes. And so she's, that's, and then that's she'd be like, the oh, idea. so you agree with me? I'm like, no, I'm agreeing with a very minute opinion on the no hymen, no diamond. But as soon as I say yes, these peacocks push their feathers out. You know, you're the puniti herniating out, hitting the floor because it's been blown <laughs> out. And they start parading around like I just said everything. Like her and a bunch of the her simps are saying, you just, you, she owned you in the debate. You you basically just said you don't believe no hymen, no diamond because she said it. She's like, oh, you don't believe it. You agree with me, right? I'm right. I'm like, no, I don't fucking agree with you. Yeah, I heard that part. I was there for that. You know what she reminds me of? She reminds me of Kathy Newman in that uh, Jordan Peterson deal in Australia. You remember that? So what much, you're really saying is, you know, that kind of shit. would have been a much more fruitful debate if it was just me, her, and Alex. But I don't know why he brings on like 80 people. This is the problem with the, the pickup artist sphere. They like to have like 12 people. and They, all they run cover other. for one another, bro. When one of them gets in trouble, five of them mob you. That's what they do. I, I watched that happen five, ten fucking times in that in that debate stream. That's what why I don't is, do debate streams. Like what she so. is, like her shtick, her job. She doesn't have a job in psychometrics because it's not profitable, because it's not a useful endeavor of science, right? But her job right now is she's literally a debate bro with a pussy. That's what she is. She doesn't yeah. listen. She's just a debate bro that spent a couple years studying what a fallacy is, and she thinks she can apply soft science fallacies to hard science chads. We don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I think uh, we should take a listen to some more of this. You down for that? Yeah, real quick. Yeah. So at the lunchroom, yeah. I'm like one of the only geneticists that actually goes to like the college lunchroom. All the pro mm -hmm. like, like a lot of profs will go, right? Not all the time, but frequently, I get sociology students, sociology uh, GTAs, uh, like PhD students, sociology professors, psych professors, psych students, women's studies, all, the, all this whole mosh pit of you know people, and they all want to come talk to me about genetics. I always tell them I'm busy. There is not a si there is not a single statement these people can make about a hard science that would make me think. No, zero. Mm. They want me to play into their game and make them feel fuzzy about themselves. Well, scientists, they're not like that, right? They, they, don't, they don't talk to each other in ways that like, I want to make you feel good when it's about science. Now, if there's a W in the lab, you get data back. Yeah, there's a huge celebration. But a, a scientist can go to another scientist and be like, you know, um, I think your theories are correct because I read your data. It's like, thanks. Everybody can read my data. Why, why, why are you trying to do this to me? But- People like erudite, they'll walk up to each other and dick stroke each other for like four hours and talk about theory and philosophy. It's like, well, I think you're really right because fallacy, 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 fallacy. I, I don't care. I got fucking numbers, but let's play the video. Yes, sir. You got it. You should say you're open to an open relationship. I'm open to an open relationship. So he's open to being cucked. He's open to being fucked in the ass by his old lady. Well, he's not getting any bitches if he's in an... If they were in an open relationship, it's like the typical Reddit shit. The guy's like... I got in an open relationship with my wife and she's get a date every day of the week and I haven't touched myself in years. It's like, yeah. you no, know, no chick is going to like, cause if a chick is going to be attracted to him, she's going to want money and attention. 
in an open relationship, you're just trying to do hookups. So no, no, if chick's that, gonna hook up with somebody, they're not, hook, they're not up hooking up fast. with like Igor over here. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, he's you married one. Well, so. <laughs> the, no, the, the, well, the chick. The, yeah, he got married, but that's completely different than getting hookups. It's easier to get married than it is to do hookups. Already violating the covenant. I believe in God. I'm a good Christian, but I'm going to violate the covenant. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to everything. Just yeah. look how he rests his head. Like, nice. this This is... He's like a dog. He's and a she's, feminine. like, tapping him on his elbow. You and know what? Bitch. What you're seeing right here is a physical manis- manifestation of that word that we talk about every once in a while. Cuckatry. Cuckatry and deference. Deference. Yes. Cuckatry and deference. Yes. It, it's almost the same thing. When you apply it to the way that these types of men want validation from women, cuckatry and deference are almost the same thing. I got. <sighs> you all right, man? A, you going to make it? She's got a more masculine jaw than he does. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play this thing. Oh, man. Why? You're not open to pegging. Do you really want to? If this guy was telling me I was a bad Christian and he has this video up online. <laughs> and they, they get so offended when I just laugh at them. Like they're just like, he doesn't have an argument. He's just <laughs> laughing. That's why we're doing this. Is it, it, it's, it's just too easy, man. This is what I did with Pearl when uh, she started to, to rise up out here in the man o sphere, in the red pillow sphere, for lack of a better term and started snapping up all these subs, and she was getting pushed by the algorithm, I went and did a little bit of data sifting. And then you find videos why I hate men, why I need men, which is the exact same video pretty much with a different title. How I Me Too'd a coach, a black coach. Now all of those videos are gone now. You know that, right? She's a racist giraffe. Yes, all of those videos are gone now. And so the amount of hubris that these people demonstrate by making the statements that they make and then leaving up their past shit just nine months ago. You're going to tell me you're totally different people in nine months? No, you're not. Now, no, there, you're are, not. there are women who can listen to an argument, think about it, and come to a logical conclusion. But yeah, as a agree. gender, especially online, especially when they don't know, they do not react to arguments. So when I first started, when I first started my, my channel, people would be like, you make good points, man. You make funny jokes, but like ease off on like the insults, like ease off on the roasts. It takes away from your message. And I'm like, I made it very clear early on. The only thing these people react to is shame. That's it. They're shamed mm-hmm. into being leftists. They're shamed yeah. into being whores. They're shamed into accepting groomers. They're fearing social rejection. And nobody is shaming them. There's nobody roasting leftoids. Like, yeah, they'll make jokes about their hair color and stuff, but nobody's going to compare a fat SJW with a tuft of pink hair to, like, a manatee, a manatee that got hit with a, a extra <laughs> extra can of paint of, like, Wonder Dye on the beach. It's like if you took a, a tuft of, of pink hair and stuck it on a manatee, could you tell the difference? Probably I, not. I actually, uh, actually swam in manatees before. They're very chill. Oh, so uh, we were out way back when before i left florida and came farther north uh we were sitting out in uh, jupiter uh marina down in jupiter florida on some jet skis and if you go out into the inlet where they've dredged it and they they dredge it every few years uh we were just sitting there crystal clear 25 foot down you can see all the way to the bottom and uh, we had manatees swim under us and i figured we should probably go when a great white swam in the inlet <laughs> right underneath us. So yeah, it was time to go. You're not supposed to touch him, but I I hugged. No, him. no, no. no I, I, I hugged one once. It was great. I, I'm sure, but if you get caught doing that, you're oh, I'd be, I'd be sitting in jail. Oh, they, uh, yeah. that's where you're selling drugs throughout college. Uh, that's fine. Hugging a manatee, you'll be in the locker the next day. You are really gonna get fucked with in Florida if you mess with manatees. There was shit. There was a woman, uh, a tourist woman. A a unless you're unless you're a ago. company, unless you're a company that destroys your environment, and then you just got to pay well, a simple fine. You know, true. All you just do is pay the fine. Yeah, pay the fine, clean up the bodies. But uh, there was a woman, a tourist, a few years ago that was out petting them and shit, and they they tracked her down and jailed her. So, yeah. Well, I don't yeah. want the manatees getting confused of like you know 
American manatees. Like this one's no white. doubt, this right? Ghost Pro man <laughs> with a twenty-five piece pro just walks in here, drops that motherfucker, and chaps my face. You make me want to vomit. That's all right, bro. I got the resilient cheeks, not those cheeks. Get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah, you know, I, got, I got, I got, I got some of the simp saying, you know, ad homs mean you lose the argument. And you just ad hom after the debate because he lost. Um, you heard my arguments. You heard my points. If you think you, you if you think that the stuff you can't base individuals off of a study because ecological fallacies from a soft science whore. Good luck living your life. I, I hope she- you go to a doctor that believes that, and you're gonna get some fucking magical mud rubbed in your wound. Because, you know, when, we don't look at studies here. When she kept calling, uh, the every time you would bring up the, the no hymen, no dimer, she'd bring it up and she called it an epiphenomena. I, I don't know that she understands what that means, which is strange because she's supposed to be schooled in this. That's not an epiphenomena. What she, when she's decreeing it to be an epiphenomena, she's saying that it doesn't have any bearing on the statistics that you're talking about when it means everything in the statistics that you're yeah, talking she's about. She's just like this. The, it's like the stats that show virgins get divorce less has no bearing on whether di- virgins get divorced right like you want a why i don't care about the why i care about the result like we use drugs we don't know how they work but they work and we use them and people get better this is very let's true. not use this drug because we can't prove what it does and so people will die again this is why hard sciences biology chemistry physics medicine are infinitely more useful than soft sciences what do you want hammerhead the apocalypse happens do you want a thousand psychologists in your compound or do you want a thousand doctors in your compound oh i think i'll take the doctors dig it <laughs> you know, i think i'll take I, i'm i'm very okay with that that's fine with me you can call me any ist ism and phobe that you want to but uh, when it comes right down to it i'm not a big fan of doctors but the things that they do, the, the practices that they have uh, undertaken over the last 100, 150 years, as far as modern medicine is concerned, well, it saved my life back in, in 2009. You know, it saved multiple countless lives, right? I mean, you can't count the amount of people that are walking around today that wouldn't be if they weren't exposed to, to medication and theories that were not replicatable. She, she is telling you that what she has studied and gotten a master's in is replicatable. It's not replicatable, not, not from person to person. It depends on whether these people are into feminist theory. And all of this, this is, it's not called feminist fact. It's called feminist theory for a reason because it's not replicatable. Yeah, and like we get, we get, and all it takes is one simp of the YouTube channel to say, but I dated a virgin once and it didn't work out. So you're wrong. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Whatever. Yeah. So what you do is you hold up the exception and you blanket everybody else with the exception and not the rule. It was so a... the 99 other girls that did stay married, that did have families, they don't count because you know one girl that didn't. And what do we call that? Bitch think. Uh, uh, bitch, it's an outlier. What we said earlier, bitch think and it's an outlier, right? Outliers are important but they're anomalies. That's why we call them that. um, Trying to find the name of this guy. There was a, whatever, I'll just tell the story. I don't know his name. There was a epidemic in the 1600s of the Black Death in England, right? Mm. Get these giant abscesses located like um, typically in the groin and like in their armpits. And it would necrose and turn black and it's disgusting. Well, one Lord was writing about the epidemic I think he was a lord or some rich guy, nobility, whatever. And he's just like, I don't want to, I don't want to die like my family died. I don't want to die like uh, my my friends and all these people died because they were, they were just like throwing the bodies and massive graves and such. So what he did was he took a knife and he cut like he had like two, I think he had like four or five of these abscesses on his on his armpits. He cut them open. They started draining, and then he swam right. aco- across the Thames River like in November. So it was freezing cold. He got out of bed, he got out of the river, went back home, warmed up by the fire, went to sleep for two days, woke up, he survived. Okay, yeah. just because that worked doesn't mean everybody should have done that, right? <laughs> just because it's the exception doesn't mean you should plan on the exception. 
Yeah, I agree with you, man. Um, that that's why you know when you see in a downturn, especially a financial downturn, all of these really soft gray fields that were created for women dry up and blow away. You know, our brother RPM says feminism goes out when the lights go out, when the electricity goes out. It's feminism not a joke. Feminism goes out. Grooming goes out. Yes. Um, this stuff is institutionalized and it's kept alive by the institutions that empower them. Yes. Well, uh, this, okay, this, 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 this guy is like hilarious. He says, a Udite is under chronic's ideal woman. She's the late kind of one and is Christian. Yeah, you're not fucking listening, bro. Uh, I, you're, you're, the whole lay count of one thing is is kind of nonsense because you know if you're sitting here talking about dick and your old man in the ass and open open uh, open marriages, uh, the whole virginity at marriage thing is a lie. It's a my, lie. My ideal woman doesn't study bullshit instead of having uh, kids. No, she's just uh, my a ideal. Guess what? My ideal woman doesn't fly down to Miami to hang out with fresh and fit. That's not yeah. happening. Don't you find that this this seems to be more of a common thing now than it ever has been? That these bitches that go on these male grift shows end up starting their own channels because now they've been taught how to grift and rape males online or grape males, pardon me. It's goddamn pathetic. Like people here know Hyman No Diamond. I think that's the only thing I look at. No. Every I mean, whore was a virgin at, once. Look at every son of a bitch that's in this space right now that is doing this. This is the go to model. Yep. You know, Ali Drummond did it. She made her rounds with all of these dating roaches. Pearl Davis did it. She made her rounds with all of these roaches. Brett Cooper was picked off of the fucking street by the Daily Wire and fronted to go talk to young people and direct them away from what true conservatism is because she does that. Because she has a nice young face. She was she's the next Tommy Laren. Do you know what as I long do? as she doesn't come out and say that she believes in abortion? She will continue to be that, and they won't let her go. You know um, what use I'd have for not so erudite and um, just pro things on my channel? Mm. They came on. Mm. They could be like a stage, and like during the show, they could like mud wrestle in the background. That's they're they're not they're not speaking. There's nothing for them to say. On Pearl, there, boy, five foot ten, about two hundred pounds too. I got my money uh, on she'll, Pearl. She'll like use her neck like a giraffe and just crack this, <laughs> crack this chick. <laughs> Actually, I'd love to do like fight like that, like me and Ruby comment like a like a UFC <laughs> kind of thing with a table. <laughs> He's got these gritty chicks mud wrestling. Oh, that's absurd, man. Let me oh, let me get this here. Ruby. She hit her with a titty twister. That's gonna hurt in the morning, Ribby. Oh yeah, definitely need an ice pack for that nipple. No fucking doubt, man. Ghost Pro, thank you for that twenty five, man. Just walking in here, cocky motherfucker. Higanino uh, Morales, man, with a two piece, man. Soft science is the bootleg science. It kind of is. Kind of is, man. Taught and prepared with a two-piece, bro. Good evening or good conversation, you guys. Hey, Amen. Most welcome. Let me get on here and read a couple of these comments. And if you want to take a moment well, when I'm done here and read a couple of yours, let's just uh, yeah, let's do them. that. Strange, beautiful music. I hate when people tell me to Google it. So do I, especially when you know that Google is a monetized ranking system. So that, that should set off fucking bells and whistles in anybody's head anybody's head uh sotanor no we ain't gonna get that one because that's a response uh, original australia man 513 watching 277 likes man let's get them fonzies up y'all come on now james von maxwell is in the house digi nomad guys watch erudiot on fresh and fit she behaves she behave f because myron would kick her out i don't know i don't know what that means i don't watch uh fed and fraud i don't fuck with them so no thanks. You got Russian any comments? Sin, you read and fraud. Yep, Timon and Pumbaa. Timon, that's my favorite one. Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> you got Damn. some comments you want to read, bro? Uh, no. Let's just keep going. Cool. Let me uh, let me hit this one up here real quick, man, and uh, then we'll get back to the video. Ghost pill, man, with a fifty piece, bro. Hammer. Thank you for what you do. Uh, keep me in your prayers. X had taken off with my kid and her ex's kids and is on the run and has fraud charges against her i would say no eggs but that's not what is big yeah i know bro we're not yeah we're not going to celebrate that that's not a good thing that's that's horrifying i hope that uh i hope that your kids are found safely that that's not good that's not good 
that's not good. And it's another it's it's another side effect, gents, of dealing with uh, the modern strag. Look, look, man, I know that you're attracted to them. You're designed. You're hardwired to be attracted to them. The fact of the matter is, is that these people, they're fucked. They're fucked in the head. Oh, but hammer, but hammer hand. I need it. I I need I need I need need yeah, it. Yeah. I need that Oh man. <laughs> Fucking zinc demon coming out of my man here. Uh, <laughs> That's just rough. I know that you guys are hardwired to want to to do this. You you want to get with them. But you have got to take into consideration now every single move that you make when it comes to the opposite sex. You have no choice anymore. anymore. Now, look at, We're not dealing about thousands or tens of thousands. You're talking about millions of default judgments, millions of court rapings, grapings. Millions of men being ruined, millions of children being cast into the fucking wind like a bundle of sticks. You just can't take it for granted anymore. Speaking like a bundle, uh, speaking of a bundle of sticks, like look at a guy right here on screen that has no discernment. Uh, none, none. Go spill. We'll get you back up there in a minute, brother. Let's get back into this video and let these two. I bet he sounds talk. like Prince when she when he gets penetrated by a big old. <laughs> Mm, I don't have like an overly strong interest. Yeah, then let's not do it. But she does have an interest. It's not overly, overly strong, but she it. could do with it. So, <laughs> am I open to an open relationship? I don't really feel a need. I don't have strong opinions. Like I think of people, I don't really care what people do in their relationships. Like, Here do you I go. think open Pause it. Listen, bitch. They're asking you as an individual. But you're just like, I don't care what other people do. No, Lily just asked you. Are you down for an open relationship? And she said, I have no opinions. So potentially, possibly. So, I yeah. as it, soon, look, it's not a no, right? It's not a no. As soon as any woman expresses any neutrality, not even interest, neutrality about having an open relationship. Goodbye. Yep. Even goodbye. Even normies do it. You see normies on Reddit dumping their chicks because they approach or the girl posting. I just I just talked to him about it saying that we could do it if he wanted. Nope. Zero. Nope. Nope. Goodbye. Uh, it, it, you you got to go because if she's asking you if she's there's a if she's qualifying how she's talking about it, you know, she's fishing. She's fishing. She's interested for herself, and she's trying to get you to go along with it. He's she's trying to it. get compromise. Oh, well, look at him. Of course he is. He's not going nowhere. He's like, I'm she a nice guy. I can get pooty tomorrow night. No, he's no, like, he's, I'm a nice he guy. I can convince that. girls to hook up with me. <laughs> yeah, he, he he don't even care about that shit, man. Let's go. Relationships are immoral. No. Polygamous I mean, so I, I guess like multiple like, partnered. I I feel like that's how it's essentially used, right? Because so how we've had if we just here's 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 some things that you should pay attention to with your females. You can see in several of the clips, crazy eyes. You can see right here in this one, all of the multiple colors in the hair, right? These are things that you have to pay attention to. These are people that are unhappy with themselves, so they try to change themselves by changing their immutable characteristics. Bro, this chick's face looks like I got a biscuit from a can and then just punched it and put it on oh, the table. Oh, man. Busted biscuit can face. That's fucked up. Just use this term hypergamy, right, for the dictionary definition. And we've always had hypergamy for all of, like, practically Western civilization, right? Because Can you turn it up and then go back 10 seconds? I can't. He's talking about hypergamy, and I'm about to roast his ass. Hold on one second. Can I turn that up? Is Hang it maxed? I'll just turn up my volume on my. Yeah, it's, it's maxed out over here. Okay, play it again. Open the pegging. Oh, do you really want to? Mm, I don't have like an overly strong interest. That shit creeps me to fuck out. And then he's gonna tell me he's a Christian. The fuck out. And, but he's he's a Christian, right? He's a fucking heathen. Both of them are heathens. <sighs> Let's continue. Let's get to the hypergamy talk. <laughs> Am I open to an open relationship? I don't really feel a need. I don't have strong opinions. Like, I think of people... I don't really care what people do in their relationships. Like, do I think open relationships are Oh, immoral? pause it. No. She doesn't care what people do in their relationships. But when a masculine man... She cares what man, you do. When a masculine man says, <laughs> no hymen, no diamond, this whore loses her shit. 
Are you kidding me? Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's are why you, I told you? you she was not a virgin. She she personally offended me? by it. She you shamed by it. Whore? Fuck you! I don't care if you do the relationships. <laughs> then let godly men find godly women. You little fuck slut. God damn it, bitch, piss me off. Ooh, ooh. My oh, man. Sorry if I get your getting hot straight. for it. Getting hot. <sighs> okay, let's hear. Let's That's hear Beta right. Boy talk about hypergamy. Let's Look at this little monkey. <laughs> I mean, so I, I guess like, multiple like I, I feel like that's how it's essentially used, right? Because so how we've had, if we just use this term hypergamy, right? For the dictionary definition, then we've always had hypergamy for all of like practically Western civilization, right? Because women have generally married up and not married down, right? Because women were used broadly speaking as like. Women were used, man. So they were used, bro. How dare, how dare you talk about biological terms you soft science soft bodied soft brained fuckwits hypergamy is an inherent trait in organisms it's not like it's western civilization it's since we were apes on the plains of africa going unga da bunga now you say hypergamy was always present because women marry up no hypergamy was present but it was restrained it was restrained. You couldn't cheat on your husband. Otherwise, wouldn't yeah, you, you, you get stoned and not in the good way. Wouldn't you say that? I, no, I'm not trying to put words in anybody's mouth here, but it, it would seem logical to me that hypergamy started out as a base action, a response to, am I reasonably safe with this guy, with this, with this man, right? Because all men were not created equally. Some were able to provide and protect while others were not. And even those other men needed protection, right? So I mean, wouldn't that kind of make sense that w that's where hypergamy started and it's just high, hardwired through the uh, millennia? Hyper hypergamy is just the idea that females want the most fit man or the mo females want the most fit male. That goes right. across species. Right. Like if I go out to the steps of East Kazakhstan and I go find some nice mountainous areas and I lock heads with some kind of uh, antler unglet, unglet, uh, antler ungulate over there, I'm going to mm -hmm. get all the deer bitches if I win. If you win. Yeah. But yeah. the idea that women, uh, at, we're at the point now where hypergamy is promoted and celebrated and allowed Everywhere. to run rampant. Yes, everywhere. It, now, it, it is the norm. For folks that are, are confused about that, that is your normal culture. The, the male equivalent of hypergamy is their sex drive. They want to spread their genes. They want to bang as many chicks as possible. Their sex drive is limited. We have laws limiting men's sex drive. If the male sex drive was as unlimited as female hypergamy, you'd be living in the United States of grape. Yeah, you would have a, a real problem on your hands. You'd have a real problem on your hands, especially if it was institutionalized the way that feminism and gynocentrism is. Ridiculous shit. Let me get back to this real quick. Ghost pill with that 50. Brother, uh, keep your head up, man, and don't let that stuff get to you. Thank you for the 50 pieces, and please keep me informed. Let me know what's going on there. Let me get down in the chat here. We'll, we'll let this roll. Just holler when you want to stop it. Like, a, uh, like capital ploy. I don't mean like capitalism, but like like you married are you saying that gays can't be polygamous because it's not a man what about you know polyamory mean? open or non-monogamous relationship that falls in serpent okay oh google's educating her nice it's like google's right. more it goes like google's better for you than three years at your shit college earning a shit degree well doesn't google just give you predicted results based on the ranking system so if you're if you're directing it in any way shape or form towards feminism gynocentrism uh men's rights any of those buzz keys, right? Any of them are going to bring up the ranked results, which are all written by feminists and cucks. Yep. Ronan asks a question. This is chronic. Did hypergamy exist in single cell organ or sing simple organisms such as single cells? Um, no. What the, once you go down to single, once you go down to the microscopic world, sex gets really freaky. It's well, really there's not weird. a concept of of right and wrong at that point, right? Well, it's it's not even hypergamy's right or wrong. It's just a way um, animals function yeah, to secure the genes. It's just animal reproduction at that point. There's there's no thinking about it. There's no did you as a single cell organism ask that fucking other single cell organism for permission, or like did you, you take it out on a coffee date? Like no. you're taking you're taking 
such a a higher level order of life. I say that because it's a more complex. Yeah, yes. bringing it to bacteria. Hey, man, do you know bacteria have sex? Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. They, they no, they they shake hands. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. They yeah. exchange genes yeah. through a tube. Yeah. There's no there's yeah, no yeah. children. You know, you're not gonna get child support as an E. coli living in someone's in someone's intestinal tract. There was a, a fucking Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of it, but it had a very interesting story about reproduction. I, I'll think of it here at, at some point in time. Uh, what is that name? I can't get that name, man. Let me see. Let me try. Go ahead. Nyblung Velesti. Nyblung Velesti. With a two-piece, man! Critical thinking is a superpower in today's time, and it's demonized. It's demonized. Thank you for that two-piece, man. 608 sets of eyeballs over here. How much you got over there, bro? You got 600, got 300, so almost at 1,000. So almost at 1,000. So that works, man. Let's get back to this shit. Thank you for that two-piece. This is a much more vague word. Nobody's going to use these words in the common lexicon. That's the problem. We have to find words to capture ideas that people will use in the common lexicon to talk about these things. So, whoa, 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 whoa. I... So, so, wait, pause it. First of all, no one's going to use polyamory in the po common lexicon. More mm -hmm. people say the word polyamory than the word lexicon. You dumb. I don't even want to call her bimbo because she got no tits. Mm -hmm. um, you honestly, like, look. This is the kind of girl who talks shit at me at the bar. Put her face up again. And I call her brave for being willing to present her new <laughs> gender in public. I'm like, I, support, <laughs> I support trans people. I think it's amazing. But I do it as a compliment. I support trans people. I think you're very brave wearing that dress in public. And she's like. I'm not trans. I'm like, wow, are you, why are you offended? Are you transphobic? Yeah. Well, you can get them coming and going, man. But this look is a uh... shitty tattoo. Is that a bird on his? Look, okay. Look at this guy's arm. It's an owl. It looks like I an see, owl. I see a flank steak covered in just rolls of grease. And look at this tiny ass forearm. There's, there's horns on there. Yeah. This dude should be, this guy should go to Hollywood. And he should Fitness be a instructor, though. He should be a forearm actor. And so the next time they make a Holocaust movie, he's like, you can use my forearm. I look like I'm an emaciated <laughs> Jew in 1944 <laughs> Germany. Like, hey, I'm a fitness look, instructor. Look, man, can't go hard on the brother, man. He was made this way. He was made this way. Pathetic. Oh. Stupid tattoos. Weak muscles. Sounds like a bitch. Man. Doesn't know what he's talking about. It, it, every George. Single, George, George of the jungle, man. George D. DeGweed with a two-piece, bro, just walks in here and drops that sum of a bitch. Oh, man, you know I'm going to get it. You make me want to vomit! Ouch. That's all right, though. I'll take it. And uh, we're going to cut back on those just a little bit. And let's get back into this video and listen to what else these uh, very educated people have to say. I think talking about open relationships is important because we don't have a social script for it right now in North America, and we need to make one, and we need to make one pa by talking. Pause it, pause it. What we the fuck? We need a social script for open relationships. What? She needs to be part. This is, this is what psychologists and sociologists do. They produce social scripts to control the copulation. Yes. No. Yes, this is true. I don't need a social script from... Honestly, I'm trying to think of the character she reminds me of. She kind of looks like, if you kind of imagine shaving her head, she looks like the bad guy from Toy Story 1. That kid that kills all the toys. Sid? Is his oh, name Sid? Sounds like fucking Daria. Looks like Sid with a wig. <laughs> Telling me, tell, tell me I need to help her write a script about how to talk about open relationships. <laughs> oh, rough. Oh, that's rough, man. Oh. <sighs> Oh, that's rough, man. Five Cyrus McCormick, man, with a five-piece bro. Chronic walks into a bar. The bar says, ow. I'd say ow. I haven't hit my head on a bar. Well, I mean, no, I haven't hit my head on a bar. I've definitely passed out in a bar, but I, I hit my head on a table. I didn't hit my head on the bar. Hey, there will be no passing out in the bar. Let's get back to this shit. Deconstruct this uh, properly. So you good folks out there that are listening to this, that don't really understand what you're hearing, uh, you're going to get a nice preview for four, so four more videos that we're going to do on this subject. Maybe not necessarily this bitch and her old man here, but uh, yeah, these people are, are doing nothing but reproducing feminist claptrap with buzzwords. 
That's all this is. That's hey, all maybe, this is. Hey, maybe if she keeps on making herself a sex object to lonely leftist simps online, she can actually get some furniture instead of that $30 Ikea bullshit shelf in the background. What the it's, fuck? You got a plant up there? You can't even take care of a plant. That plant's dying. You got a house yeah. husband. You can't even water a damn plant. Probably walks up to it, gets mild on it. He's intimidated <laughs> by a goddamn plant. That, that plant's got more protein than one of those leaves than me. I, I, I got I got great by a plant once. One time I tripped and a, a blade of grass broke my nose. So I understand why oh. he's scared of the plant, but at least you should oh. like, take your goddamn plant. It's a dumbass blue ass wall. Look at that wall. Was that the, the French flag? The flag of surrender? What was that dumbass picture? What was that? Some, some, uh, did one of your students, after he was done clapping your cheeks, <laughs> Give you a postmodernist artistic representation of like, look, like the guy's having a gas mask in the art. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's like when dudes get in a pussy hole, they need that kind of level of protection to not catch anything. Oh, fuck this bitch. Yeah. Fuck our dumbass yeah. pictures. This dumbass blue ass wall. Don't know why it's blue. Got red up in there. Look at those simp ass. Look, if someone gave me this guy's arm as a chicken wing, I'd send it back to the kitchen and be like, I'm getting robbed here. There's no meat on this fucking <laughs> bone. So oh, take okay, your no, take no, your no, chicken no, wing ass that. arm, take your dumb ass picture that's not even straightened out. It's crooked. Uh, How are you gonna stream in front of a crooked picture? There is no professionalism here, and your dumb ass IKEA furniture holding books you haven't touched in ten years and probably got dust on it like your eggs and go home. Well, what did she? How old did she say she was? 26, 28? 28. Uh, 28. She's uh, right there. Uh, so that means ninety percent of her eggs are gone. Da, 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 da. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> now, I think that this is an interesting comment here, man. Shadow Hunter with a two piece, bro. Open poly relationships equal cheating. Script complete. Well, is it cheating or is it re is it rewiring the way that men would react to them? See, it it is cheating, especially if you've taken the vows. Yes, it's cheating, but it also serves the purpose of desensitizing men to sluts, to female fuckery, to whores. It it serves more than just one purpose, my man. Do you want to so, yeah. you want to know the tweet I made that got me banned? Oh yes. That's when did this watch. happen? Uh, well, I'm like, I guess I'm suspended. Um, so I haven't really gone on Twitter. Since I got suspended, this is like no. I told you when I got banned, or that was suspended. a long time ago. It's a couple yeah. of months now. Uh, I just watched Edge Runners, and everybody was talking about it. So I posted a picture of Lucy, and I had my description, or I my, the the words I said were um, like, anime. Anime is dangerous to young men because it presents a fantasy that a woman might actually care about them. Yeah. I think that's blew up, and then I lost man. my account. <laughs> no shit. Really? That's, yeah, that's what hilarious. Got you, man. That's amazing. That's amazing. Let's watch this shit. About it, but we can't talk about it if there's too many really precise words and people are constantly fighting about, like, tautology. Um, and then the words that we do pick are things like CNM. Consensual non-monogamy is a boring-ass yeah, word. Anytime you have to get into <laughs> acronyms, you know that the language is getting stupid, yeah. basically. No. Man, she just roasted MGTOW, bro. That, that simp just roasted MGTOW. He's like, acronyms are stupid. What do you think? What well, do you say about that? I don't really think that, number one, those folks, they're not qualified to speak on anything that we do. Uh, as far as acronyms and, and constantly rebadging words for things that already exist, for phraseology that we already have, for verbiage that we already have, that is a, that's exclusively a leftist Marxist tactic. It's to confuse the language and confuse people coming up. If you can split your culture into uh, shades, into fragments, and certain sections of culture grow up believing this, they're taught this, they're going to think that the people that came before them don't know what they're doing, that they've never been there, that they can't relate to anything. So they're going to look down on them. It's just natural that they're going to dismiss them. I don't. I don't let leftists play their word games. I just don't. no. Neither do I. And when they do, anytime they just, happens in my presence, I correct them. Anytime a leftist calls me a racist, I just call them a groomer. There you go. Right. It's like, oh, you can there say you I'm go. a racist. That's really bad. I'm just going to imply that you touch children. Because if yeah, we're just playing that, we're just going to play that game. I'll play that game all day. Yeah. Somebody said hundred cock stare in the, in the chat. <laughs> she got little beady black eyes, bro. Yeah, it's she's like, got shark eyes, man, like some, dead eyes. This is some uncanny valley shit. I'm going to go to sleep, and yeah. I have to go to the bathroom at, like, 2 in the morning, and I look in the mirror and see her, like, reaching out with, like, a manuscript <laughs> saying, like, we need to improve our social script. I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's scary stuff. This is not clinical words. Don't know if you've covered Clini this yet. Fucking clinical! 
Come on. Come on. Get it out of your system. <sighs> this bitch wouldn't know clinical if every doctor working at Mount Sinai schlong slapped her with a stethoscope. Maybe that's a life goal. Who knows? Who knows? believe in the stone stoned ape hypothesis regarding chimps the stoned ape hypothesis is based i love the stoned ape hypothesis you got, you got little boys you got little boys selling fitness advice calling stupid theories based yeah this is this is this is peak intellectual discussion on the left right now yep it's not surprising it's fucking disappointing but it's not surprising of human sexual organization have existed in the lexicon throughout time the obsession with all the categories is very recent yeah but we need categories because we need language to talk about them. Because if you want to advocate and create social scripts for these things to exist and for people to replicate. She just said it right there. Yep. Just gave it up. She gave up the game. She just said it. That's it. It's, it's a done deal. She, she's not a, a, a holder of a master's degree. She's a holder of a license to uh, crush the culture, to kill the culture. Especially the culture that she doesn't like. She's probably a self-hater. Probably a self-hater. Once we, once we stop fighting with words and we fight with blood and bone, these people go away. Yes, very uh, quickly. Now, you know, she wanted to talk about politics, and I'm like, I don't care about the West. I don't like democracy, and I have no power, so like, I'm not going to argue a system. I just know the system's broken. And she didn't yeah, touch that any, point. She's like, let's talk about something else. I'm like, good, because you can't no, defend it. You can't defend it. Any, anything democratic, when people refer to democracy, I laugh in their fucking face. Because there's, there's no such thing here. It's an illusion. You need the lexicon to talk about it. And I'm going to tell you right now, CNM is not fucking it. I prefer, I prefer M&M to CNM personally. E -N -M. <laughs> is that what you mean? Ethical non-monogamy? I said I prefer M&M. <laughs> yeah, like the fucking, like the rapper or the candy fuck bag. Hey, look, I might see a muscle definition line. Uh, no, I don't think so. Right. Right. Hang on. I'll get it rolling here in a minute, man. Age of Machines with a 10-piece, bro. I agree with Hammerhand. Notice how women are driving the... Uh-oh, what happened there? Notice how women are driving the poly and transformer movements for quote-unquote, lack of a better term, harder than men, a lot fucking harder than men. This is what happens when you empower women, folks. The, these These movements i wish i could call them something else but that's what i'm going to call them these movements of people of philosophies are not being driven by men mostly you know migtow and monk is entirely being driven by men you want, but, you want, uh, you know what democracy is hammerhand uh yes it's tyranny by it's, the minority it's four guys consenting and enjoying sexual activity with one woman not enjoying and not consenting it but it's democracy I suppose that's true. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Uh, movements harder than men. First, they destroy marriage with a view for cucking men. Uh, they want everything but what God intended. Well, that was why they got rid of God and religion first. You see, you know, if, you, uh, you, know, if you can separate Western man from his faith, then you can you can separate anything from anything else. You know, you're not allowed to have... Christian statues on government property, unless it's like a really old one that's grandfathered in. But you know what they are making? At least I saw one in Seattle. Mm. Um, they're putting... Oh. Um, oh, I saw it. They're putting, yeah. uh, what is it called? A menorah. Right. Yeah, big old that's menorah in front of the courthouse. Yeah, there's a menorah, and then there's a, a statue of Baal. It's found fucking believable. Someone should, someone should go to the menorah and like... <laughs> Not really, but this is a funny joke. I can imagine it. So, so I'm going to go to the menorah and just cut the tip off every of the candles. I'm like, what? I'm making it Hasidic. <laughs> get, the, get some Hasidic, Jew, some Hasidic Jews. Be like, He's doing the Lord's work. We'll release that, my man. Terrible, man. Cyrus McCormick, man, with a five-piece bro. Chronic insulted those two so hard. Their ancestors felt embarrassed. Loved it. You got anything you want to read on your side? Uh, yeah, I think here, like, I think I won. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Senor Gonzalez says, for some usury bucks to re up on a little bit of green dye. Thank you. If I ever do a, a face reveal or a face show, what I do is I just paint my entire body green, including my beard, just dripping wet paint. And every like five minutes, I snap my fingers. And Manic will come out with a big old thing of paint just poured over my head. <laughs> <laughs> you better have some fucking. Some plastic or something on the floor, oh, man. Faster. <laughs> like the rapper. The rapper, yeah. 
Again, not so erudite skepticism regarding spurious terminological precision is good stuff. I think terminological precision for esoteric conversations is really, really important. I'm really smart because I use big words, but I can't look at a statistic and apply it to my life because that's a fallacy. Esoteric, nonetheless. She should, I, again, she should go to a soft doctor in science or a soft doctor in soft science to get to get treatment. Yeah, I would agree, man. Um, I, I think these people are so far gone. If you're indoctrinated to the point where your indoctrinator is handing you a master's, you have you're you're gone. You're done. I hope that if she you're breaks done. her leg, she goes to the hospital and then gets in an esoteric conversation while her leg goes <laughs> off. <laughs> it's just like it's just like the bone's broken, but what is broken? Like really, what is broken? Like they just I mean, her, and, no. her, her, and the Canadian oh, SJW no. doctor just debate it for like three hours, and they're like, "Well, it looks like your leg's gangrenous. We have to cut it off." You mean cut it off? Like like amputation? Well, my bodily autonomy, well circumcision. It's like, well, it looks like you're in a coma. It's <laughs> about what it looks like. Zevi and the altar man. What a five piece! Just dropping in here and chapping both sides. I'm not going to play the uh, the clip there, gents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I've got we got to get back to this one and, and knock it out. I, for like social advocacy and like actual like general conversations about these types of things, we have to make the words accessible. And <laughs> how the fuck they are, they are accessible? What the it's fuck called, is this bitch saying? This, well, she's like this. She's this is a um, this is an exercise in job security. He's got the, the more, perfect. The more people the have a need to make her. complex social scripts and talk about it for eons, the more money she gets, the more people like her get to suck off society. We have words for these things. You're a whore. Yeah. You're a slut. You cheat. <laughs> you're in an open relationship. Come on. That's man. right. And what they're trying to do is to remove all stigma, all shame, all blame, which it, it, it equates to what? It's one fucking word accountability. They're trying to take all the accountability from them and put it on you. That's it. That's what it. That's what all of this boils down to, gents. All of these degrees, whether you're a fucking sociology professor, whether you're an understudy, if you're just going through the fucking mill to go out here to Walmart and try to convert the workforce, it doesn't make a difference. It all boils down to accountability in every sense. Ideally, I think the words that are best are words that are like somewhat self-evident of what they mean based on the word. Yes. You mean like any other oh, wow. fucking word? Oh wow, she just she she finally discovered how scientists name things. Right, right. Like any other fucking word that's already been proved, right? Let's think let's think of one. Um Hepatocellular <laughs> carcinoma. That's a complex <laughs> we we need to change the social script behind uh, the term liver cancer. Instead of liver cancer, we should teach all the people that have no idea what cancer, like how cancer really is defined and make them understand the word hepatocellular carcinoma. No, just tell the person that got liver cancer, dumbass. <laughs> Zevian, thanks for that five piece, bro. Mr. Pliskin says, got my master's in underwater wood chipping. <laughs> I would, I would unironically have so much fun getting like a doctorate in some bullshit study. <laughs> It'd be the easiest thing oh. to do. It'd be so easy because at the end of your PhD, what you have to do is you have to, you have to defend, right? You have to do a defense, which is basically you in front of five PhDs or like the heads of the departments, and they just try to roast your, your research and you try to prove you did it right. They'll come at it from every single angle. This is the uh, look. We have only let me. How many minutes? This is four fucking minutes of this trash, and we've been on it for an hour and twenty minutes almost. So during my defense, I four had, minutes during my defense, I had two like old school organic chemists, which I don't know. I, I wasn't. I didn't get organic chemistry, but they were roasting me on stuff. I had no idea what it even meant. I had a guy that was on a Nobel Prize winning research team. I yep. had a woman who helped discover uh, the genes. Like she has like some kind of syndrome named after her. Mm -hmm. and then I had the person who he didn't invent it. He like um, he improved one of the uh, microscopes I used. Uh, so like a sweet. physicist, Nobel Prize winning, not the Nobel Prize participating uh, biologist, uh, famous geneticist, two organic chemist. I walked into that room hammer. I already, I already shat before I went into the room. I felt like I had to shit again instantly. I was like, oh shit. 
it Look, was it was three hours of sweating, like just <laughs> struggling. But we got out. Now, if I did my PhD in psychometrics or bullshittery, I just go in there and just cry about how I'm privileged, and they give me two PhDs. <laughs> Look, when you walk into a room full of recognized people, and I'm not talking about people that are recognized because of feminist theory, I'm talk people that have made actual, real, legitimate contributions to the advancement of society or engineering or science or math. These people, you see them in every sector of humanity. They are the most vile, fucking scrubby son of a bitches. And they all operate basically out of the same areas. It's it's lack of accountability and jealousy. And they'll roll their eyes at that and they'll dismiss it out of hand. Jealousy has a huge, huge part in what's going on with the culture right now. It's enormous. It's like descriptive, yeah. non-anacrom... -an Acronym? It's why I advocate strongly for functioning labels in autism, because if I say ah! functioning... Ah! You hear that, Chaz? She's fighting for you. This <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> is why I fight for the autistic people. <laughs> all five autistic people I knew or know would like literally tell her to shut the fuck up and then keep playing their Pokemon. Yeah, peace out. Everybody Everyone knows it. what I mean by that. Everyone knows what I mean, and they understand the prescriptions of how to engage with that individual broadly and what that individual's experience is in broadly. Consensual non-monogamy is descriptively pretty solid, but it's not very... Consensual non-monogamy. So you mean the shit that everybody's doing and that you're exploring openly on this very stream. It already has a name. It already has a description. This is what they are. Also just any time you use an acronym. Yeah, a bunch of fucking hoes. <sighs> that other people don't know the meaning of. It just comes off as like condescending. Do I feel the same way about BDSM? Uh, so I would say originally when BDSM kind of like first came about, I would have made that criticism of it, but it's yeah. become mainstay enough that it's like, it's practically not a BDSM. So, it's not, it's so not. the only, so wait, they just said the only thing that they care about is if a word becomes accepted, then the word's good. Yeah. So, yeah. All so what argument... she's saying more than that, but what she, what she, what she's saying is that she and her kind, and I'm not being funny when I say that, want to want to have the power to define your speech. Yep. That's what they want. They As want the power to define your speech. Yeah. That's like what they study. Yes. Yes. And if you so say bitch, if, bitches if, like this would be in think tanks somewhere. And if, and if you say something to her that she doesn't like, no hymen, no diamond, she needs to pull out all her pseudoscience to prove you wrong. Yeah. And you can't do that. It, it's it, they, they talk about logical fallacies all day long. Yep. You can't prove a logical point with an illogical field of study. Feminist yeah, so, theory is an illogical field of study. So after I, after we had our discussion, I literally called up my, my PhD friend. I was like, hey, this chick, um, you got her master's in psychometrics. And he said, he's like, that's a funny name for bullshit. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she said, I'm not allowed to tell men to go for virgins because they'll get divorced less because she says it's a fallacy because the individual is more than just her virginity. And he's just well, like, he's just like, this bitch is stupid. There's a study based on one. This bitch. This is this is a study based on one variable, and she's saying there's other variables. Like yeah, sure, but those variables well, there, are there might them. be. Yeah, it's like there look, might be, but think back she has, about what if she has an Audi belly button and two left feet, and she has an extra tooth, and there's a five percent more chance to not get divorced, so there's a five percent less chance to get divorced. I yeah, you find a virgin like that if you can. Sure. Yeah, but even that bitch that you just described would have him lined up around the corner. That's just that's just a fact. That's a fact. You know, if she was a reasonably decent person, even with extra body parts, there would be somebody that would be into trying to fuck her and wife her up. Now you can't. There's science is changing because the linguists, the language controlling demons, are changing the language. Like yes, I can't are. call someone I, on my personal Twitter account. I got banned like within a year because I call it. I said, um, mental retardation is a medical term. I'm banned for that because people get offended by it. 
Yeah, I've heard that before. I've I've actually seen that with some larger accounts too, yep. where they would talk about retardation, and uh, they're trying to figure out how to frame that now. They like to use autism, but it's not the same thing. And uh, I mean, it <laughs> shares some of the same effects, but it's not the same thing, man. Sound, uh, sound robe with a ten piece, bro. Thanks to you and Chronic, as an atheist, I'm opening up to Christianity. Most of my church experience has been. Male bashing. You're going to want to be real careful with the churches, bro. Most of the churches are cucked. It's just make it your own. Interpret it yourself. Yeah. Well, I'll add a little bit of something to that. The only Christianity that you should be worried about right now is what's in the pages of the Bible. That's the only Christianity that you should be worried about right now. When you learn that, and you don't have to memorize it word for word, but when you learn it and you're comfortable with it, then you can start finding other expressions of Christianity. But you never go outside of the good book. Religion and the good book are not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Don't have to memorize so, the Bible? I think that you should be comfortable with it, but memorizing every word of it, it's going to be next to impossible for most people. There was this, you know, there was this I, remember, puts, I remember going to a church. Well, I, I went to the church. I went to church, and I remember Baptist church. And they brought in a, I'm not sure if he was a pastor, but this, uh, this black guy, I say black guy. Cause like, it was kind of mixed, probably like 20% uh, black, okay. but it wasn't a, a black Baptist church. It was just, I ain't like worried a, about that shit. So, yeah, say what no, I'm, just, say. I'm setting up the scene, right? This dude was probably like five foot 10, but he had a glorious white beard. Mm -mm -mm. Like, like probably went down almost like 10 inches down his chin, like huge white beard. Mm -hmm. And for the sermon that weekend, this guy sat down. Well, I didn't say he was standing. He, he, through memory, read like half of the book of Psalms. Went crazy for like an hour. Just went off. It was awesome. This guy was going hard. Look, man, I, I have nothing but respect for people that can do things like that. Uh, I think anybody, well, most anybody, if you put your mind to it and you dedicated yourself, you'd be able to do that. Uh, but it takes a, a shit ton of dedication. Uh, so no doubt been, about it. We've been, uh, our culture has been destroyed. Our churches have been corrupted. Our women have been turned into whores. Our children yes. are murdered in the womb. Other children yes. are castrated. Other children are raped. Yes. We're told we're evil. The enemy is, the enemy's in control, right? The enemy's at the gates, brother. So, and, well, not uh, the, no, it's not at the gates. Not at the gates. He's, he's in the citadel. He, he's well, that's what I'm saying. He's got the locks and the keys. Yeah. Yep. So, Here's what I think. Think of Psalm 137, if I may read it. Psalm 137. This is after the Jews got captured and they were, they were slaved, enslaved, and sent to live in Babylon. They yeah, had Babylonians, but I think it was... I don't know the king. Was it Nebuchadnezzar? It might have been his daddy. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept. When we remembered Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the mists, therefore. For that they who carried us away required of us a song. They wanted us to sing. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Zion, let my right hand forget how to play the instrument. If I do not remember you, Zion, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, the enemies who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundations. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as you have served us. Happy is he that takes your little ones and dashes their heads against the rocks. Mm. So they're basically singing the praises of the future people to destroy Babylon. Mm. Like what you did to us, mm. praise be to the people who are going to do it to you. And that's it's my always, exact outlook in the situation. It's always on the comeback, man. There's, there's always going to be a snapback. 588 sets of eyeballs in here. Moving on one hour and a half. Check this out, man. Zevian, the altar with a five piece, bro. The church lies within the buildings, are empty boxes filled with deviants. Yes, sir. 
Can't disagree with that one at all, man. Avery Parker, hell, chat. Original Australian at Hammerhand. See this headline. A Palestinian from Jerusalem, Sally Azar, became its first woman pastor at uh. an event at the Lutheran church in the heart of the old city. Uh. Uh, that means Israel has fallen. When you accept this, when you accept preaching from the pulpit, from women, you are not in a church anymore. You are in a gynocentric facility that does not, does not take heed of the word of God. Uh, church of Satan. Uh, uh, it's not far off. Yeah that's, yeah, that's how I see it, right? Not far off. You're not preaching the word and you're not adhering to what the Bible says. Plain and simple. This isn't a Bible lesson, guys. I'm just telling you. You know, this is this is a problem. Well, the, the thing is, not Sir Eudite was using her knowledge and debate skills to tell me I was a bad Christian. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't care what heathens opinions about my religion is. This is why, why I you... typically don't argue religion. Right. And you don't defend yourself to people that are you cannot present an an a defense that's adequate to them because they're not trying to confuse you for the benefit of truth. You know, they're not trying to, to string you out and get the aha gotcha moment over truth. They're just trying to do it to dirty you up. And uh, she, uh, they failed largely. They failed. I mean, for what I watched of it, they didn't really succeed on that, man. Uh, Zenden first as a new member. Thank you, bro. Much appreciation, man. Thanks for coming on. I think th she was looking at it as if we are the same um, goy sloppified Chino Christian, the, the, the one that has no teeth, that, mm -hmm. you know, the Chinos, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I think I should be a good person. Like, that's not me. Like, we're not the same religion. Like, that's no. at the end of the we're not the same religion. No, you, we you are You have not. no bearing to tell me anything. Well, you don't accept criticisms or kindnesses from heathens. You, you don't. These people do not regard themselves as heathens. They regard themselves as the new moral and ethical vanguard. She was like, in your religion, and she was like, in our religion, you did this. In our religion, this is what Jesus said about hypocrites. I'm like, in my religion, I don't get teaching from a woman, period. This is cool. So no matter what you say. <laughs> and, and, and after that, after this, found out she wants an open relationship, find out her husband's like, an emaciated he's, African he's child with a shitty tattoo that he's sells weak. fitness advice and wants to get pegged. This is what this is exactly why you don't get teaching from a woman. This That's is exactly correct. why. That's correct. Because you end up becoming the woman. She supersedes your position in the world and becomes the man. And that's what they want, bro. They don't want nothing less than that. Can you do me a favor, man? I'm gonna go drain the main vein. Can you hang on to it for a second? Yeah, I'll, I'll read some of your comments. Let's go through these comments, boys, on Hammerhand's page, and I'll go over to my page. There's a ton of comments going down. I can't, it's just, the comment box is just flying. Man. Cool to see them all, though. I'm slowing down. Let's see, what do we get here? And uh, shout out to Hammerhand, shout out to Kite and Chaz. Zevian, the altar says, the church lies within the buildings are empty boxes filled with deviants. I completely agree. Zedin, who now bought a membership to MGTOW Master, thank you for your support of Hammerhand. Good stuff, guys. James L. Maxwell says, uh, analysis, you got it. They're pretty serious. Okay. 25-year-old Grandpa Incel says, under chronic, I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously. Yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. That guy's based. Cyrus McCormick says, the Lord laughs, for he knows the time of the wicked is short. And oh boy, is it coming. So closer. Every day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. I agree. So guess what Dever says? That's a dog tattoo on his arm, not an owl. It, it could be a lion. I, is that a dog tattoo? This looks horrible. It just looks horrible, guys. Let's see what uh what comments you got on my channel. If you uh Fatal Storm says, if you haven't read the first five, five books of the Bible, we don't believe in the same God. Yeah, these people completely ignore the Old Testament. Uh yeah, they, well they do at that. And uh luckily I've got me. Got me one right over here that has the old and new in it. Every year, and it's 
every year, um, I already read, I read all your super chats, the recent ones. Um, every year, my father reads the Bible from front to back and he'll annotate it. He'll like write notes and stuff in it. That's what I As do. As of now, when he dies, each of his kids are going to get three to four Bibles annotated that he read through. And those Bibles are more precious than a car, more precious than a house. Um, I actually can't describe how precious those will be to me. So, and Brother, these people will never understand that. Let me tell you something. For the person that has eyes to see and ears to hear, something like that, even though it's in the form of a book, it is actually your sword and shield. It's going to tell you how you live life. It's going to basically it's going to tell you what to look out for in life. What life's going to throw at you. It's going to describe to you what evil is. It's going to describe to you what deviance and debauchery is. And you're going to know what it is. And you'll be tempted by it. Just don't do it. Great books. Great books to have. That's a good father. Yo, this guy's got the same skull structure as Andrew Tate. Like, look. Look at him. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't lie oh, about man. that, man. Oh, man. 25-year-old grandpa in cell with a two-piece, bro. You see, I don't enjoy, you know, smurfing. But <laughs> when done righteously, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for the two-piece. Cyrus McCormick, with a five, the Lord laughs, for he knows the time of the wicked is short. And oh boy, is it coming ever so close, ever so closer, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Thank you for the five-piece, Cyrus. You're not joking, my friends. You're not joking. Brothers, we are getting there. Let me, let me walk that back. We are there. We are there. We are there. When you consider the things that you've seen over the last decade or so, the last, especially the last five years, we're there. Hammer just like, man. Hammer just like um, we're getting there. We're going to get to the cuck part of the swamp. And then Ruby <laughs> looks out the boat and sees just like white <laughs> yeah. fluid everywhere. And Jack Murphy's jumping in and doing back, like oh, doing like synchronized swimming. Yeah. He's like, we're there. Hammer, we're here. <laughs> Slip and slide. The zinks, the zinc pools. We've made it. Now, Manic, put on the 1940s <laughs> submarine gear with the tube, you know? Oh, man. And I put it down. And as I put it down, and Ruby's like, wait, there's a hole in that tube. I'm like, oh, God, pull Manic up. Pull Manic up. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking d disgusting, man. Vitless with a five piece. Ecclesiastes 726. I find something more bitter than death. The women or woman whose heart it snares and nets. He who pleases God escapes her that's because he who pleases god understands his place if you're going through a bad breakup or some bitch broke your heart read ecclesiastes uh you know line of migtow has said that before and i believe that i i haven't gotten there yet so let's uh let's get back to this trash i only went about 10 minutes into this we're not going to do 35 minutes of this shit so i host this with the most anymore yeah it's like its own verb and i think the i think part of why bdsm stayed better as a acronym is because what it stands for is not something that's going to be easy to talk about with normal people because of the words themselves like bondage and stuff do you motherfuckers do these people understand she doesn't even understand what she's saying bdsm is part of the nomenclature it's part of the lexicon of, of the language out here everybody knows what the fuck bdsm is bondage domination slave master right S slave master or sadomasochism i've heard it said both well, ways. I, I would if i would just troll her and i'd send her Super, well, I wouldn't, but someone should send her a super chat and be like, hey, are all those white Southerners doing BDSM in the 1800s? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, God, man. You know, it's, it's entertaining to me to watch folks that are absolutely rudderless try to steer the ships of other people. Disgusting shit. Like that. Um, and so I think switching to an acronym actually made it more palatable to talk about. Whereas I think on topics like open relationships, which I think we need to be talking about, using a um, acronym doesn't make sense when we already have good words like polyamory and polygamy. Lost Vein 91, man. What a 20 piece. A 30 year old woman told me once the reason why there is an imbalance in the number of males and female teachers is because the institutions are scared of men graping the kids. Well, that's the feminist fear porn, the satanic panic, the military toys of the middle and late 80s. That's what it is. It's the PRMC with Tipper fucking Gore on Congress on the Hill. That's all that is. 
scariest part, she looked at me with eyes that believed it. That's because they do believe it. They do believe it. You're never going to hear about women in history that have drained the blood of virgins and bathed in them, that emptied out 40 or 50 bodies so that they could swim in a pool of blood. You're never going to hear about it. It's there. You can research it. But you'll hear about the man that brushed by somebody in Waterloo Station and was persecuted mercilessly for two years because mm -hmm. she said that he graped her. You will hear about that. Thank you for the 20 piece, bro. Maybe I should Channel do eight. a top maybe I should do a top 10 thoughts of history video. That'd be fun. That would be kind of fun. I wouldn't even call them thoughts. I mean murderous, murderous. Scumbags. Well, you know, for the title, I just say top 10 thoughts of history. Yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Uh Channel 1800 with uh what a five piece, bro. Chronic did well with waking up uh the guys in another stream. Is that the one that you just did? Especially the Aussie guy. This girl here, though, she's uh, she is a poop. Even Riggs would not touch. <laughs> Absolutely fucking filthy. Let's get this one. Then we'll get back to this shit. Night vision goggles with a five piece, man. Silence. The monk at the top of the mountain and Kush Cloud Warrior speaketh. Thank you for that five piece. I appreciate that. You got anything you want to read off on your side? Nah, let's go. Like, I feel like we just need to agree that maybe those words' meanings have evolved and use, like, polyamory as the general term. I am, I'm just for using polyamory as the general term. I don't know why we wouldn't. Um, it doesn't really make sense to me. Also, though, another thing that's different about BDSM is it's not, like... BDSM is weird, right? Because it's also a community. Uh, sure. No? I mean, I'm sure there's a community of dudes that want to fuck your wife when you get in an open relationship. Sure. Yeah, it's it's a descriptor. They're all gonna that's go on a group is. on and get half off the bus to your city. Cool. That's a community. It's a it's a yeah, it's a descriptor. It's... Like it's not just a, a Well you could argue that polyamory might become a community as well. I guess so. Because if you're looking for polyamorous relationships and like want them to work well, you're probably gonna want people within the community because they're gonna understand the social scripts. I don't so if you want to be a second or third tier choice to some female that her hypergamy is on overdrive and you can't find a woman out there, you too can be a fucking cuck. I don't need to go to the polyamory community to get two girlfriends. I just got to look for a girl with daddy problem. Another girl with daddy. Well, you find them because they're fucking everywhere now, bro. They're everywhere now. The last 30 years of raising kids single. Yeah, bro. Yeah, we're here. No, no, that's weird though. To create a community of polyamorous is like, like, like is are are the monogamous a community? Like, not really. No, but like, is any major group? I don't really. Know if the sexual community. organization is a community. Like, it could a, be. A kink makes sense to be a community. Go ahead and skip forward five minutes. Let's see if they stop talking about stupid words. It's chicken wing. Oh of way i don't know i'd be super curious if anyone like knows people in these type of relationships and is open to talking about it i have i just want to understand their world i'm very curious to see how how it is done i mean economically poly fidelity i don't understand if you know if you know all the terms phrases you got a master's degree why don't you know anything about this why do you need somebody to call in or leave comments about it to try to educate you i thought you were educated I should fly up to Canada and fuck both these people's mothers and then call in and be like, I had a polyamorous relationship. With <laughs> just, just to make a fucking point. <laughs> uh, you sit there, I'd like to introduce you to someone you know. Yeah, it's your mama. It's like, like, let's, uh, it's like, I'd call their daddies in and be like, these guys are also very helpful. They like bring in like jugs of like 10 gallon Vaseline jars. I need a lot of this. That's for sure. I think the point uh, of this stream right here folks is to tell you that if you're going to listen to tripe like this you got to be real careful just because somebody comes on with a squared up jaw and a steeled look and they're determined that they're absolutely 100 percent correct because of a piece of paper and uh pseudo education doesn't mean that they're correct people at the highest levels of world governments world leaders are wrong every single day every day and you have never seen it more than you've seen it in the last 10 years eight years it's an epidemic 
Your culture is corrupted. It's polluted. And you have to be one hell of a man to navigate through this. You got to be very strong mentally. To be honest, like this, like these people are hammer hand, like just from listening to this, like besides like the laughing at them for being cucks and, and uh, pegs and whatever, these people are fucking boring. Like, how can you sit there and just be this boring for, what, 36 minutes? It's about the only time anybody's entertained minutes, is yeah. when she gets triggered and starts pulling out her degree papers to talk about fallacies. Yeah. Like, this I, I, bitch is boring as fuck. Can you get it off my screen? I don't want to look at this finch anymore. You got it. I think that people like, I'll, I'll clear it in a second. I think people like this exist primarily to lend uh, verbal support but a physical face with that verbal support to people that are either sitting on the fence or people that have completely jumped off the morals and ethics uh, train that just don't want to be bothered with the, the effort and the work that it takes to be uh, an advanced being. Let's be honest. You're an advanced being today. If you practice morals, ethics, and values and principles, if you can control your biology and not let it drive you to make stupid fucking life altering mistakes, I really think that you're an advanced type of being. That's, you, that's if, just my thoughts. If you, you can know? say no to a woman because you only want to consort with virgins for the purpose of having a strong family, you're like in the 1% of dude. You're a strong motherfucker. But you see, you, you're not looking a month down the road. You're looking at the consequences of all of these interactions that they'll have on you for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. And you, you want like more. 40, 50, 60. You're looking at your, your whole life in total. Yeah. You're looking just, at your whole I life. I smash that tonight. That takes an amazing amount of strength on that fella's part not to be tempted. And and don't, don't misunderstand me out there, guys. There's a lot of women out there that will sleep with you for the sole purpose of saying, yeah, I fucked that motherfucker because I could. My ex-wife told me anytime she had a problem with the guy that she was with, I'll just come fuck you. Ooh. That's how that's how clear they are about their intentions. I told her on the spot. I said, "You'll never touch me again. You You're fucked like, my sorry. whole life up." I like, "I'm sorry. I'm allergic to fish sandwiches." <laughs> yeah, I well, I'm I'm allergic to people with no character. You know, if you yeah, don't have you any are. fucking character, yeah, yeah, here you are talking to a green skin. <laughs> that's what I hear from time to time. And I got to be honest with you, Chronica, you know, you and I both have our differences on things, but I don't need to yell at you and scream at you or, or proclaim it to the fucking sun. We're more alike than not, you know, at least in the morals and ethics and values and principles department. I mean, yeah, for, you do things, I, I but think, I do things too. I think for me, the most important part is like me and you know what the big battle is. We know who the real enemy is. That's true. So like that's true. We come to different conclusions to like how to men should live their lives, but like when I when I talk to a pickup roach or I talk to a debate bro or like air you die or any of these people, they can't even recognize the danger the society's in. They can't recognize the enemy in their control. Well, so, I mean, they're pawns of the the actual real. Yeah, they're enemies. on the other. Yeah, they're like fighting for the other side. So like, at very, yeah. I'm not gonna like be cool like you're not gonna have a cool relationship with those people no of course not you know and it's becoming more and more evident more and more common that folks like well it's we're ass deep in it already but that folks like this have a microphone and a camera and they have a platform to megaphone this shit out to anybody that can hear it you really do have to fight you do have to fight you know, I, I know people thought that they were going to be able to sit back on their thumbs and enjoy a period where they would never have to stand up for their freedoms. They would never have to stand because it was enshrined. Right. It was it was ingrained in stone or, or written in stone. But that's not the case, man. It's not. It's not the case. There's, there's. There's not a lot of masculine men left. No, there's not. A lot I'm, I'm of sorry traps to say. and snares for yeah. young boys and and to kind of I agree waste their lives away and never actualize one out of life I agree so 100% man I mean like I view it like this I am only going to fight one more not fighting more than one. just one so I will prepare for that one and I will be ready for it all this all this shit for this decaying society and more proud boys Antifa in the street I'm not going to go to jail 
for the the chance that I could change society to give it another twenty years. You know, America is diseased to its core. A politician's not going to fix it. A law's not going to fix it. A movement's not going to fix it. The vote's not going to fix it. A fiat currency's not going to fix it. Nope. So I nope. have no interest in defending it. I have no interest in prolonging its life. None of that. Because all those things I could do, like people who care about this community, this country, all that stuff, they get sent to jail for 30 years. You got people who protested January 6th getting tortured in jail cells for like, what, two years now? Well, bro, they, they oh, three years. Yep. These these people, no trial, no nothing. These motherfuckers are in prison, imprisoned, isolated, probably being tortured three years now yep. in this country. And good old boy Trump didn't country. do anything for them. No, he didn't do a fucking thing. He hung them out to dry. Yeah, I'm not interested in. Nope, he didn't do a thing for them. We all know where this is headed, and um, I, I, we don't have to be any more specific than that. You know, you can start picking people off that are being extraordinarily vocal about it and try to remove that influence, but this motherfucker's going to pop. It, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. I think the biggest influence that people, they don't understand. I got a couple posts I was going to stream about later mm -hmm. week. It's not a left wing, right wing issue. It's not no. a, it's not a Trump Biden issue. It's not no. even an LGBT straight issue. The the fire that is growing that is going to cause shit to go down is if you go find ten men under the age of thirty and you ask them, Would you die for this country? Most of them are saying no. This country sucks. These men have yeah. nothing to fight and build for. All I their agree. power has been removed. I agree. And they will find a they will find a solution. More and more. I agree. Get it's it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, bro. Channel eighteen hundred man with a two piece hammer. Ezekiel nine describes most of us here. I'll take your word on it, brother. I'll take your word on it. I have not gotten there yet, but I'll take your word on it, man. Um, we're right at the two hour mark, chronic. Just about six hundred sets of eyeballs in here watching this old Spurger Burger and the Green Skin Commander. Uh, meticulously, with thought and effort, dissect two scrubby motherfucking Christian wannabes and put them in their place where they belong. Never, ever be afraid to call out fuckery and fakeness where you see it. Part of the problem with this culture at large is that people are too fucking soft. They're too soft. Live and let live. No, because they won't let you live and let live. Yeah, I mean, no. I, I'm not a, I'm not a free speech advocate anymore. I haven't been for a couple of years. Well, we ain't really got free speech. Yeah, well, so. it's just like after I, I, the microcosms YouTube, people are like Chronic. Well, if you if you if you, Chronic disagrees with you, he's just gonna ban you from commenting on his channel. I'm like, fuck yeah, I will. You want that to change? <laughs> Give me my 14 channels back, bitch. If not, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> free speech for me, but none for thee. Yep. That's the way I see it, man. Uh, yeah, I think two hours is good enough on this. How about you? No, I'm fine. We can split our different ways. Cool. Uh, much appreciation, man. Thanks for coming on here. And uh, I think I'll go a little bit longer on this side, read up some of these super chats and comments, and we'll talk about it for a little bit. But, yeah, uh, thanks for having me on for this, bro. I appreciate the shit out of it. I'm happy that we didn't uh, give our give our Brutas an eye workout today. Like, yeah, you know, me too. Yeah, they were ugly, but it wasn't like that um, – that Troon special you had me suffer through. Yeah, it was pretty terrible, but that builds character. <laughs> oh, little Hammerhead Jr. is going to be looking at transgendered models every night. He's like, Dad, please, I want to play video games. No, son, we're going to build your character. What does it even Bro, mean? Nah, I, I, I quiz him every once in a while. I'll go get a random uh, Transformer picture. And I'll, I'll put it up there and I'll say, <laughs> boy or girl? And he goes, that's a boy. And I'm like, hey, my man. Yeah, that's oh, my, that's, that's fucking man. hilarious. Okay, I said, Hammer. I said, boy or girl? Yeah. Okay, Hammer. Have a good day, man. It was fun streaming with you. Yeah, you too, brother. Peace out, man. Have a good one. Peace. Uh, so, and there was one, one war band, one warrior. You want to support the show? Consider donating to Cash App slash Cash Sign Undead Crime. That's cash app slash cash sign undead chronic. Been undead chronic, guys. Take it easy.